Let's continue with our Spring application and do three things. First, find out what dependencies we need to get started with a Spring project. The minimal dependencies, and it's not as many dependencies as you think. Second, build the first so-called application context to Springify our project. And third, after all that, live happily ever after. Let's check it out. Okay, so back in our application, let's clean things up a little bit because now things get confusing. And let's move these things, don't ask again, let's move these classes to an upper level. Like so. Write the mail service as well. And the last thing was the user deo. So now things get cleaner a tiny bit. You see in your trading application, you only call user service. You don't have any classes inside here anymore. And you have mail service user, user day or user service classes. Okay, good. Now to get started with Spring, we obviously need a Spring dependency. And when you look at the POMXML file, you see it's a very empty Maven project. And it's so empty, you, ever, you won't ever see an empty project like that. And what you're missing is basically a dependency section down here where you're going to put in the spring dependency. And that means you need to find out what you need. Let's open up a browser and go to mavenrepository.com. And you're going to look for a dependency called spring context. You hit spring context, right? You see all these versions. You can, in fact, you could also try the same thing we do with the, the spring 1.0 from 2005. But we're going to pick the latest one in this episode, and it's 5.1.2, right? And then make sure that the IDE gets a chance to download all, these download all these libraries to your project. And in the external library section, you'll see you have the Spring Context dependency. And the Spring Context dependency itself has a couple of other dependencies, AOP, Beans, Core, Expressions, JCL. It's a bit more than we actually need. But other than that, that's a pretty minimal set of dependencies you need to get started with Spring, with plain Spring. Just to pull in the Spring Context library, and that's all you need. Now, back to your trading application. It would be nice if you could somehow get a user service which is fully configured. And when you look at the user service, it would be nice that instead of having, you know, to create a new mail service inside the register method or a new user deal, you could just have the mail service configured for you. So let's have a field called private mail service mail service. You have another field for the user deo, like so. You create constructor parameters. And now down here, you forget that line. And the only thing you do is you say mail service. And here you say user deo. So in the end, you hope that wh whoever is calling public user service with these two constructor arguments will know what mail service and what user deo to put in here. And that's nice. Then you go to the user deo. The user deo has already uh, a data source inside here. So that could work because you don't create a new data source in here. It just gets passed in. And the mail service is already also ready for that. So someone should pass in a host name, port, and username. So in the end, that's all you need. And now, obviously, you need to have, uh, you have the trading application. And now here, you'd have to put in the mail service. So you could, in theory, just put in these, the line we just copy and pasted or cut out. You could put them in here. So you create that user service like that. But what you want to do is actually get the user service fully configured from somewhere. And that is what Spring does for you. How do you do it? First of all, you need a new class because in Spring, everything is or starts with an application context, a so-called application context. And for that, you need an application context configuration. So you create a class like that. And there's one annotation. You put on that class, it's called the configuration annotation. Like so, make sure the import is right. And I'm a bit lying because historically, instead of having these Java files with the annotations, you could also create XML files and there's a ton of different ways to create application contacts. But uh, in newer projects, you'll always find the Java-based configuration with these configuration classes. 
and that's what you're going to learn about in this episode. So you have the configuration and you're going to say, well, there's an, another method called public mail service mail service, right? Like so, and it will return a new mail service. And you annotate the whole thing with a bean annotation. You have another method. You can just copy and paste it here. We say, well, public user dao, user dao. And that, in fact, will return you a new user dao. And don't worry about it. There's multiple ways of doing actually the same thing here that we do explicitly writing these methods annotated with the bean annotation. But you learn about the other methods in later episodes. So for now, you have two beans, mail service user dao, and then you're going to have a third one, which unsurprisingly is the user service. User service, user service. Like so, it will return you a new user service. So there's a couple of things here. What does the bean annotation actually mean? Bean is just a fancy word for an instance of a class. And that application context configuration tells Spring, well, I'm going to have one instance of a mail service. And that is the method you should call to get that mail service. And the same for user Deo and the same for user service. So you could put in your host name here, localhost, 8080. I always say 8080, even though it's a web pod, should be a mail server pod. And then you have your myusername.com. It's the same for user Deo, and you want to call the data source, the fake data source method here. And we'll actually have to make sure I left the, uh, the data source method somewhere right, right on the user service. You might want to copy it and then go to back to your application context and put that method inside here. That's a bit dodgy, but forget it for now. Just we want the code to compile. And in here, you obviously need a mail service and you need a user Deo. And there's a couple of ways to do that. So either you could just call these methods like you saw here. So you call the method directly. But what you also can do is saying, well, you're going to have some construct, not some method parameters here. So you're going to have a user Deo here. Put right inside the method. And that's how you get your user service. And Spring is fancy enough to scan that class on application startup and say, well, I've got a mail service here. I've got a user Deo here. I've got a user service here. That user service needs a mail service and a user Deo to work. And thank God I have these two methods. So it knows exactly what to do. It knows exactly what dependencies to inject into which other classes. And that's exactly what we want. So let's go back to our trading application. Our lonely user service is still down here. It doesn't work. And now it's time to call a class or to create a new instance of something called annotation config application context. As I said, in Spring, everything starts with an application context. There's multiple different application contexts like XML application context, but there's also an annotation config context. Annotation config, because we have our class here and obviously we have a couple of annotations here. So you put in the class, like so. You extract, actually there's a, the new method, the new keyword. You have your context here. And now let's make this screen a bit bigger. Instead of saying new user service, you ask the um, context, please give me a bean of type user service dot class. And when you look at that, you can extract a variable and that's where your user service comes from. And suddenly you have a user service and hopefully that user service has everything it needs. It has a mail service, it has a Deo and our program just works like before. Let's try it out. Let's run the application. It takes a second. Exciting. Let's see what happens. And in the console, you'll see, well, that's our system, our printing statement here. But again, you see, I'm sending out a welcome email via localhost 463. I'm saving a user to a database with my data source. And actually, that is great. So instead of constructing the user service yourself, you now had Spring construct the user service for you. And you can simply ask Spring or the application context, please give me user service 
and then um, you can do whatever you want with that user service, knowing that it will be fully constructed and ready to go. I think that's enough for today's episode. Congratulations, you've got your first Spring application up and running. And in the next episode, we're going to have a closer look at Spring Beans, what other attributes they have, and also how we can do the same thing we did in this episode. Why are dependencies with constructor injection, but via other methods, hint auto wire. So let's check it out.